Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 27 of uh, Opening Basics. In this video we're going to uh, take a look at the uh, Four Nights opening. An interesting opening. This was very popular uh, around the beginning of the uh, 20th century and we'll get to some of those lines uh, that were, that were uh, all the rage back then. So, um, and uh, they're still, um, uh, you know, it's still an interesting opening today. It's just not, not so common. So let's take a look at it. E4, E5. Knight f3, knight to c6. So knight f3, the main move from uh, white, putting pressure on the center, and knight to c6 is the main move from black, uh, defending. Of course, we've already looked at other black alternatives. Um, and now uh, white has a lot of alternatives here. In, uh, in the chess basic series, I looked at the Rui Lopez and the Italian game, bringing the bishop out to this square or this square. Um, so I'm not going to cover those again. Um, we just recently finished covering the Scotch game, D4, a very interesting opening. So those are the uh, top three choices. And then the fourth choice in the, in the database is Knight to C3. Just uh, developing another piece and preparing some of those other moves. So this is called the Four Knights variation because the, the main move for black here, and really the best move, I think there's really only one best move in this position, is uh, Knight to um, F6. Just a symmetrical development. Now, it is possible to play other moves. It's not like uh, other moves are losing. But uh, this is the move that gives the best chances for black. So that's, that's almost always played. And um, now the main move for white here is bishop to b5. And that's known as the Spanish four knights. And that's the, uh, the variation that was uh, all the rage at the uh, turn of the century, the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and I will cover that in the next video. In this video, I want to cover everything except the, the Spanish line. So um, how about, you might want to ask yourself, what, what other lines are possible corresponding to uh, <clears throat> just uh, e4, e5 without the knight on c3? What other moves are possible? Well, of course, there's the, uh, the Scotch game, so there is the Scotch four knights. There's the Italian game, so there's the Italian four knights. We'll take a look at those. And then um, also g3 is an interesting little sideline. Uh, let's take a look at the Italian Four Knights first. Uh, it seems logical. If uh, the Italian game is an interesting game for white, why not uh, play the Italian game with an extra, extra knight uh, being developed? Um, for some reason, right here, <coughs> I guess it's because of the insertion of these two moves. I can't say for some reason. There's a definite reason. This move is considered a bit of an inaccuracy. And the reason is that black right here can um, just take the e-pawn relying on the center fork trick. And this is one of those positions where uh, um, this this allows black to pretty much equalize. Um, let's see. <laughs> White can actually ignore this scent castle, uh, but probably best to take the knight and go in for the complication, allow the fork. Um, it's hard to believe that you get a lot of compensation playing on a pawn down. So uh, anyway, um, that pawn is forking the two pieces, and uh, so black is going to get the piece back, and then white is going to get the pawn back. So the material will be even. And basically this, this maneuver uh, nearly equalizes for black, so that's why this Italian game, or the Italian Four Knights, is not, not played so often. Um, the main move for white in this position is to drop the bishop back, just defending the knight, and preparing to take back. So uh, white would rather uh, give up this knight than give up this bishop. Uh, the knight's not going to be stable there on that square in any case. So this is a way of uh, giving up the knight and um, and getting the bishop on a good post. So white is trying to do the best he can with uh, what he's got. And, uh, well, the main line goes uh, d takes, bishop takes, and then um, just bishop to d6, just defending the center. Um, white can uh, castle here. Uh, the main line is actually to play with d4, but this just kind of opens things up and uh, not a lot is going on. This this is pretty equal, this position. Um, one thing to notice, I guess I should continue the, the line a little bit, there's always this uh, bishop takes knight check to mess up black's pawn structure, and that, that is played in this position. But uh, it's not so great. The queen gets a pawn here. So black has what looks like a terrible pawn structure. The pawns are even, right? The material is even. 
uh, in compensation for his uh, doubled isolated pawns here, which look uh, pretty pretty awful at first glance. Uh, what black has is the pair of bishops and open lines, and uh, both sides have easy development. But in this position, actually, uh, black is a little bit better. Uh, he needs to castle right away because the queen is the queen is looking at the uh, the g pawn there. So castling, defending that pawn, getting the king out of the center, and white needs to castle as well. So both kings get to safety. All the pieces uh, get developed. Um, this move uh, c5 can be thrown in to kick the queen. The bishop has a good diagonal over here to hop on. And it's just with this open board and the two bishops, uh, black is a little bit better in this position, actually. So, uh, so that, this line just can't really be recommended uh, to, uh, to white. I guess uh, if I were uh, to try and play on for an advantage from this uh, position, instead of playing d4, I would just castle here and, and play the position like that. But overall, that's why the, um, <clears throat> that's why the Italian... Uh, four knights is not considered so great. So let's let's go back. So we're going to look at the Italian four knights once more. Bishop c4, just take the pawn, takes back, and then do the old center fork trick. And the bishop drops back to d6. Um, there is one other funny line here. Um, notice that uh, when the knight moves away, um, it doesn't solve white's problems because black can push on with... Uh, e5 there and fork those two pieces. So black can get a piece back in two different ways. So uh, in addition to simply grabbing the knight right away, uh, black can also play f5 <laughs> and uh, kind of a funny move, staying a piece down, but uh, well, no matter where the knight goes, uh, black is going to uh, get a piece back. So uh, the main move here is knight running away to c3 and then pushing on with e4 right away and um, bishop Bishop could go to e2, I guess, but the more active post is out to b5. And then um, e takes f3. It's funny. It looks like uh, d4 may be an idea here, but, but uh, while well, the chess engine likes e takes f3 best. And um, so that's another way to play. This is a little bit riskier for black, I think. Uh, you know, the king seems a bit exposed over here. Um, so I can't say I recommend that, but it is playable. And, uh, and it's just interesting. It shows that you, even in this position, you don't need to take your piece back right away because when the, when the piece moves, you've always got that e5 check. Okay, so that's it for the Italian four knights. Let's take a look at um, one other move here. Um, that's the move g3. That's actually fairly popular in this position, kind of an interesting um, sideline. g3. Um, just preparing to develop the bishop to g2 castle and go for some uh, long-term play. Um, black should develop his uh, dark squared bishop so he can castle quickly. Um, it can come to either um, c5 or b4. Either of those squares works. The most popular is bishop to c5. And we'll just take a look at this. Bishop goes to g2. Um, d6, shoring up the center. Um, and now uh, d3, and uh, also opening up a line for this bishop. So the pin is possible here. But um, black ignores this and plays the move a6. So this is one idea. When you hit this bishop outside the pawn chain over here, you want to have a square to drop it back to. So if the knight comes over here to harass the bishop, you don't want to give up that bishop. You've, you've developed it outside the pawn chain, and it's a strong piece. So you want to hold on to it. Um, the normal move here is um, castles. I just want to point out that um, if uh, white tries to take advantage of this uh, a6 move and pin your knight, you can play the move h6 here. And the bishop has no good retreat square. If it drops back to uh, h4 here, you're just winning a piece with g5. So, uh, <clears throat> so the move here is actually to take and queen takes. And, you know, that can be played, but the point is that um, in this position, white's just played d3. And uh, and you might worry about this pen. This is a, one of those positions, because of this uh, pawn structure over here, this is one of those positions you really don't need to worry about that pen. Even though your bishop is outside the pawn chain and it can't come back to block the pen, you can always kick that bishop with h6 and force a trade or a retreat. So that's why uh, a6 is the main move here. And then uh, castles. 
and castles. Or bishop to e6. Either one of those is playable. And uh, this is an even position, maybe even, nah, just, just an even position. You know, black is comfortably equalized and um, kind of a slow game. There's going to be a closed game from here. So an interesting way for the white player to play um, if he's looking for that slow game. He wants the slow build up. He has maybe ideas of moving the knight out of the way and pushing the f-pawn forward and going for some kingside attack. That will take some preparation, this uh, bishop outside the pawn chain. That's one reason why it's popular here on c5. It's keeping that f-pawn pinned for the moment and slowing down white's attacking ideas. So, uh, <clears throat> so play continues from there with about an even game. So that's the uh, g3 line. Let's back up. And uh, I'll go through... Uh, the whole the whole lineup. So we have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and now knight to c3, the four knights, and knight to f6, the, the main response, and the reason why it's called the four knights. So here we looked at um, the Italian four knights with bishop to c4. We looked at g3. I don't know what the name of that is, but uh, it's an interesting way to play. And then the Scotch four knights with d4. This is like the uh, second choice after the main line bishop b5. So, um, the, uh, as in the, the regular Scotch game, the, the main move for white is to just uh, take that pawn. It's, it's possible to play with bishop b4, but it's actually a little better for uh, black to uh, go ahead and take the pawn. So, pawn takes. Oh, uh, one point I wanted to make here. Um, after, no, it's after pawn takes. Um, the interesting thing about this, compared to the regular Scotch game, when there's no knight here, um, uh, white has a number of gambit continuations, like bishop to uh, c4 or pawn to c3. None of those are possible because you've got to deal with the, for the fact that the knight, first of all, it's blocking the c-pawn, and secondly, it's under attack. So uh, taking back is the main move. You could, you could try knight to d5 there as kind of an interesting uh, way to play, but this is the main move. And then, uh, once again, black needs to develop the bishop. In this case, uh, bishop to b4 is the most uh, active post for the bishop, pinning that knight, and uh, black is preparing to castle. Um, and the best try for white in this position is to try and uh, damage um, black's pawn structure with knight takes c6. So we get knight takes c6, taking back with the b-pawn, keeping keeping this pawn in the center so there's no uh, queen trade here, which would be a bit unfortunate for black in this case, and um, preparing for a later d5. So play would continue bishop to d3, typically. Um, once again, um, black has the possibility of taking here and damaging white's pawn structure, but uh, that's not good. As in the previous case we saw, although with the colors reversed, um, you're giving your opponent the, uh, the bishop pair with open lines, and uh, white would just be doing fine in that case. So um, the main move here, uh, well, you can just castle here, and that's fine as well. Um, and the other, but the main move here is uh, d5 immediately, challenging the center. And because of this pin on the knight, um, you know, there's this threat of pushing the pawn forward to uh, to d4 and uh, trying to win some material here. So almost always this pawn will be taken. And you will get this kind of interesting position where this uh, the pawns are undoubled immediately. Uh, let's see, white castles and uh, black castles. White develops the uh, the bishop and uh, pinning the knight, and then black plays c6. I wanted to get to this position. Notice that um, this bishop can always drop back to block the pin, so it's not a problem in terms of uh, trying to break this pin immediately. It's it's not a big deal at this point. And uh, white has a number of continuations from here. Let's see, moves that have been tried are uh, knight a4. Now that there's no pin, the knight is free to move. Um, queen to f3, or knight back to e2. Different ideas um, are possible in this position. Um, both sides have castled. Both sides have uh, pretty much completed their development. Uh, black needs to develop this uh, light squared bishop somewhere. Um, Black has a little more center influence, but, uh, well, this, these pawns may also come under attack. Anyway, once again, we've gotten to a position which is about even. 
So when white is playing all of these lines, it seems like uh, black can equalize um, with, with correct play. Black can equalize without too much trouble. And that's why you don't see these lines so much at the top level. But they are, they are different positions. They have uh, some interesting, interesting strategic components. Um, and so they're, they're worth a, a try now and then just to, uh, you know, if you're <laughs> tired of playing the same old thing, you want to get your, your opponent into a, um, into a different position, one that he maybe is not familiar with, you can try this, some of these lines. Um, I just wanted to mention about the queen of three line. I mean, this looks kind of interesting, putting the queen on this diagonal. Um, I think, uh, let's see if there's a, there's a particular response to that. Bishop to d6. Okay, just, just uh, retreating this bishop back. Or bishop to e7. That's interesting. I was thinking maybe maybe white would need or black would need to develop the light squared bishop, but it looks like just uh, since this knight is no longer pinned, it looks like redeploying this this uh, bishop to an active square is the main move here, and uh, <clears throat> I guess there's no worry here. You know, if there's a trade here and the queens come off, the the best of pawns will be compensated for once again by the dark squared bishop. So you don't really need to. Although bishop e7 is a move here, you don't really need to play that. Okay, so that's um, all of those lines, I think. Let's take a look at this again. So the Scotch four knights. Um, no, so the four knights. Knight to uh, c3, knight to f6. And um, yeah, we looked at bishop to c4, the Italian four knights, g3, and uh, d4, the Scotch four knights. After d4, let's take a look at this, see if I missed any lines here. D4, E takes D4, now that's the main move. Knight takes D4. And Bishop to B4. Knight takes C6. Yeah, all this is, is pretty pretty standard. Bishop to D3. And uh, D5. Oh yeah, I mentioned instead of um, D5 right away, black can also castle and delay that move. But I think D5 is going to be an idea in the position anyway. Yeah, D5 you play at this move. And uh, with similar kinds of ideas, um, you know, you can continue avoiding the d5 move for a while by playing rook e8. But it uh, doesn't appear to be any great advantage to black uh, to avoid that move. So I guess you might as well play it right away in this position. Right here. And, uh, well, we get this line we saw. Okay, so that concludes the coverage of these uh, uh, the slightly less common lines in the um, in the scotch game let's put this position back on the board erase these arrows so uh, next week we're going to look at the main line of the uh, four knights and that is with uh, bishop to b5 so I'll see you guys then